Model engineering for beginners, part 45. Cutting threads in the lathe using a die. What can happen when you get it wrong? In the chuck at the moment is a random piece of steel bar that I found in my scrap box. I'm going to cut a thread on this piece of bar using a die. First of all, I face across the end. This has almost become a force of habit. Put a piece of steel bar in the chuck and face across the end. That way at least you know the end of it is square to the chuck. Using my micrometer I come to the conclusion that this piece of bar is more or less 7 16 of an inch in diameter. Before I start I'm going to spray the piece of bar with some metal cutting spray. And that's because this is a steel bar not just a piece of brass. This die holder is homemade. I think it's possibly an apprentice piece. That means it was probably made at some time in the past by an engineering apprentice. And as you can see, it's been turned from one lump of steel. And if you look closely at it, you will realise that this is not an easy part to make, especially one that ends up being accurate. In this episode, the phrase, do not do as I do, do as I tell you, definitely applies. I'm using the hand type die holder because not every beginner has a tailstock die holder. To make sure that the die remains in line with the work, I'm using the tailstock chuck to keep it square to the work and stop it wandering about. I start off the job by hand, then engaging back gear, I run the lathe fairly slowly and let the lathe do the work. And as you can clearly see from this clip, I'm chasing the die holder down the work using the tailstock chuck. The die that I'm using is a 7 16 by 26 threads per inch die. And I must admit, the thread is not looking good at the moment. As you can see, the surface of the thread is torn. What's causing this? Well, I would think it's something to do with the fact that the piece of bar is not exactly 7 16 of an inch diameter. And the speed that I'm running the lathe at, even in back gear, is too fast. As I repeat this sequence, you can see that the die is taking too great a cut, the lathe is running too fast, and the swath that's collecting in the die is very rough and coarse, and that's what's damaging the edge. It's a combination of factors, and although this would work as a screw thread, it's very rough. But in my opinion, this is a piece of scrap, and I'm parting it off from the main piece of bar. The lathe is still running in back gear, I'm using plenty of cutting fluid, and thanks to the video editing facility, the job takes no time at all. I'm trying to do everything wrong in this episode. As I pull the piece of bar out of the three-jaw chuck, it's not running truly. This is not a massive issue because I am going to turn it to the correct diameter. Why is it not running truly? Well, the bar may be bent. It's just a piece of scrap from my scrap box. For this part of the experiment, I'm purposely turning the first part of the bar under size. For a successful, accurate thread, the piece of bar needs to be turned to exactly 7 16 of an inch, as I'm using a 7 16 by 26 threads per inch die. Now I have a situation that the piece of bar is turned all the way down 7 16 of an inch, apart from the bit at the end, which is considerably less. Well, two or three thou anyway. Before I start the threading operation, I'm spraying the bar with this metal cutting lubricant. And once again, I've engaged back gear on the lathe to slow it down, but it's not really running slow enough for this job. Here's a fairly essential tip. When using the tailstock chuck to keep the die holder central, it's really important to fully withdraw the jaws. The jaws grab the work and the entire chuck spun round, and believe me, this is really tight. I had to put the lathe into reverse just to free it off. Once I'd opened the jaws fully on the tailstock chuck, I continued the threading operation. And now in this image, you will see there are three things wrong with the work. The end of it nearest the camera has been chewed up by the tailstock chuck. I faced across the front of it just to make it look better. The first bit of the thread doesn't look too bad at a first glance, but when you look closer, the outer edge of the thread is flat because I turned it under size. 
The rest of the threads on this piece of bar, which was turned to the correct diameter, are really bad. I closed the die very slightly and took another cut, in an attempt to clean up this mess that I'd made in the first place. You may be wondering if this is going to do the trick. Will I suddenly get a perfect thread? When I was doing this, I had my doubts as to whether it was going to work. I didn't have to wait very long though, because now I have a weird sort of a messy thread. The front part still looks reasonable, although it's a terrible thread because all of the tops are flat, and the other thread, which is the correct diameter, is OK in some areas and diabolical in others. What is the reason for this? Should I take up another hobby, I wonder? Here's a reason, and it's clear for all to see. Look in the six circular cutouts. Quite a few of the holes are almost completely full of very sharp and very nasty pieces of swarf, which I'm currently poking out with a piece of brass bar. What I really need to do is open the die up as far as I can inside the die holder and recut the thread by rotating the chuck by hand or at least running it a lot slower, stopping and backing it off to clear the swarf frequently, not forgetting to start with the die clean in the first place. In this close-up you can see that some of the threads are OK, but then there are big chunks of very badly damaged thread. Because the clearance holes in the die were blocked, pieces of swarf started to act as a turning tool and destroy the thread. In the next episode I'll show you how to do it properly and make a boiler blanking plug. But that's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.